uh, I, I've got the world's cheapest engineering slides here. Okay, now how did I do this last time? Okay. Woohoo! Okay, so before we get to the joke questions, this is my uh, Brian Brian Wilson's guide to investing. All right, so so basically, um, I'm going to assume what what normally happens is about half the people in this in this conversation in this room totally know all of this information and it's completely old information this is really really basic stuff um and the other half have never heard any of it um and and it's and so hopefully it's really useful to that other half um i'm going to be really adamant about certain pieces of philosophy and and if you and you feel free to just object or disagree i'm i'm certain there's there's individual exceptions to a lot of this uh stuff but I want to assure you, this is all just completely well-known, well-understood stuff that everybody knows and that that has a clue, and, or doesn't have an agenda. But uh, there, are, you will you will run into it. Uh, and and what I, what got me started thinking about this was about a year ago. I think I gave a talk on the stock options, the Backblaze stock options, and a few people afterward were like, they had no idea like about any of this. And so I'm just going to give you a few links to start you off. And and to Google things, um, and and then the most important thing is, don't trust anybody. Anybody who gives you any investment advice, no matter what it is, they're probably wrong. Okay, that, that's after this talk, right? No, no, Once that includes this talk. This oh, is an okay. absolute rule. This is absolutely the case. You cannot, you cannot. If your gardener recommends to you that you buy a stock, don't trust him. Don't trust them. There's no such. Well, we'll get to the point about there's no such thing as picking stocks. But okay, so so just that that's that's what this this the sort of the framing of this, and this will give you a few jumping off points, and 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 hopefully I can convince you all that this is the most straightforward thing in the world. Okay, uh, so before we get before we get to the the questions, which were like super fun for me to write up, uh, uh, it, it, it is the the note at the bottom of the presentation that says one. Okay. If you are totally confused by investments, if you have not done anything else, if you don't know anything else, in 30 seconds, all you have to do is buy this one mutual fund. That's it. I swear to God. And and now, uh, a quick survey question. Do you all trust me? No. Yeah. Right? Uh, We're nope. not supposed to? Hell no. That yeah, is correct. You, you all, what, you all Catherine? Have. Who are you and what have you done with Brian Wilson? Yes. 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 So we will give you. We will give you copies of this of this presentation. Um, and I'll. And you know what? I'll. I'll copy and paste this uh, VTSX uh, link for you right now into the into the into the comments, just so that you have it. So the the VTSAX is. Uh, so um, VTSAX is is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. It mirrors. Uh, if you don't have any time, if you don't, if this the whole presentation confuses you, just go back to point one and, and buy it. There's just no downside, and um, it's the world's largest uh, stock mutual fund, and it has the lowest fees. And we'll get to why that's important in a, in, a, in a bit. But um, it'll return about ten percent on your money every year, give or take. And uh, and now you can Google it. Uh, but but that's it, it. This is not complicated. Anyone can do this. You can buy this. The assignment questions. Okay. Uh, so the first question is. So now now that we've gotten away with the answer, you know, like let's go through the little questions I mailed out. So how do you pick your financial wealth advisor, and and how much should you expect to pay them? Um, by the way, the answer to all of these questions is that's ridiculous. Um, uh, every one of them. Every one of them is a mistake. So the first one is how do you pick your financial wealth advisor? And how much do you expect to pay for them? Okay, and and learn why they are good, honest people. Okay, these are horrible people. These are horrible, horrible human beings. And anybody who tells you to get a wealth advisor or a tax advisor is is totally wrong because you can go back to number one and do it yourself and not pay anyone. And so there's this is just it's just a horrible idea to have a, a, a thing. And these guys exist. It turns out. Uh, like if any of you are engineers or, or geeks or whatever, it turns out that uh, um, we we got into the wrong area. Investment banking and bankers and wealth management, it turns out when you're around people with a little bit of money, it's really easy to graft off a few percent for yourself. 
and add no value. In fact, probably lose them all their money, but you make money the whole time. So whatever you do, don't hire an investment advisor. And I'll show. And then the next, the next, the next little bit, I'll show you. If you have ten minutes, I'll teach you everything there is to know about investing. The, but if you, but if you only have thirty seconds, go back to point number one. Um, I'm a tax advisor, and I'm not horrible. Um, so again, there are going to be exceptions. Huey works in the accounting department, so he, you know, this is an exception. But um, I, I can't keep up with the comments. I'm going to ignore him. So, but this is if you if you don't know any information at all. Don't hire one of these guys uh, because it turns out uh, all almost all the advice they give you is is totally wrong and they're bad human beings and they're they're literally there just to make a little money uh, for themselves while screwing you uh, and the the great thing about bankers and we'll we'll get into this because when <laughs> when we were coming up with backblaze we we had this thing about uh, what our persona should be like Yahoo is really friendly you know Google is really goofy uh, mm -hmm. bankers are very very serious and they wear tot suits and ties right bankers yeah while they're stealing from you like have you ever heard of Enron or you know or just it goes on and on like none of these guys are honest so so bankers just steal from you but they dress really well and they're very smooth while they're grafting off you know a, per, a percentage of their stuff <laughs> So, okay, so how do you pick your financial wealth advisor? Question number one, don't. The answer is don't. What percentage should you pay them? These guys, there's actually, a, when you when you get a little more money, these guys approach you and they want to take what's called two and 20. Can I type in this and it like shows up live? Uh, two no. and 20. And you can Google this. And this is how this works. They take 2% of your entire net worth every year even if they lose money and they take 20 percent of any gains they get you because their sales pitch is they're promising you that they can beat the market which isn't possible it has been proven over and over again it's not possible so these guys these guys will take two and 20 as they lose money in a down market if they have 50 clients they literally have all of your money within one year like they they have their net worth is as much as one of you in a, in, in a year and they take 20 percent in good years which is ridiculous you don't need one of these guys you can just go back to point number one on this slide and 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 buy vtsax for free and so anyway so going on to two uh tricks to easily and safely beat the stock market there is the over and over again, there have been these incredibly famous challenges where someone smart like Warren Buffett will put up um, uh, I think a million dollars, five million dollars. What was his bet? And he said, anybody who can beat the market, I will give them this million dollars. And um, and there's a little bit of randomness when you're investing. So in the first year, it looked like someone might take his million dollars, but then they all they actually all pay. pay I think it was a bet, and I think he, they paid him or something, and he gave it to charity. But the point is, you could never beat the stock market. Um, the 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 average of the stock market. No one in the world can pick stocks. No one. Not your not your gardener. Not your investment advisor. You know, it, it just it it doesn't work like that. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and there's I was I was telling Eli earlier. There's this confirmation bias. If you pick a stock, if you say ah COVID, I should invest in medical stocks, and it goes up. Um, the first time you ever invest, you start thinking you're good at this. But see, that's 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 a that's a that's a trick. Uh, this is where uh, you're standing at a roulette table, and you bet all your money on red, and it comes up red, and you think you're smart and you can predict the future. So you you know you stay in this. You can't you can't you can't predict the future, and you certainly can't. Why well, think about beating the professionals? So there's no way you as an individual, the whole game is rigged. And there's no way you can individually pick stocks. It, it just is just not going to happen that way, um, it, unless you have insider information, which will land you in jail and get you arrested. So that's the way to to to, to the only way to pick a stock. Uh, and the and and here's how bad it is. There's a there's a a book called Flash Boys. I think it's called Flash Boys, and it's about these guys who bought the building next to the the like New York Stock Exchange or something and got fiber optic lines so that their trades were faster than yours. And when they saw that someone was doing a trade, they would sneak in and grab a little bit before. That's how rigged this is. You're sitting so far away from the stock exchange and you're like, you know, trade. No, you don't pick any individual stocks. Um, okay, so 
uh, for anyone who joined slightly late, my, my disclaimer at the top of this was this. Uh, I'm going to be really adamant about stuff, and, and you shouldn't trust anything that I say. Feel free to object, but, but most of this stuff is well-known stuff. And then hopefully you can Google it yourself. But um, OK, so now, do you trust me that you should, you should not try and pick individual stocks? Does anyone trust me? No. Good. OK. Um, <laughs> Forrest, good. OK, so uh, how to avoid paying taxes without consequences? Uh, uh, don't do it. Uh, pay your taxes. I mean, my, my, my one rule is, is, you know, anybody with total power over my life and guns and tanks and nuclear weapons, you just go ahead and pay them what they ask. So um, pay the government. There's no avoiding taxes. And anyone, anyone, every time we've heard of, um, oh, I wish Vlad was here. You know, he's in um, Yosemite. There was this scheme to, so we at Backblaze have a problem. Too much of our, and everyone in this conversation, too much of your net worth is in Backblaze stock. Now, to get diversified, so there's this scheme that rich people did, and you can Google this. And what they did, so normally to diversify, you would have to sell some of your Backblaze stock and buy some other stock like Apple, right? Then you're diversified. Okay, the problem is you have to pay taxes when you sell your uh, Backblaze stock. So the way around this is, uh, there's somebody at Apple with too much Apple stock. There's somebody at Backblaze with too much Backblaze stock. And there's someone at Cisco with too much Cisco stock and what, or NVIDIA. And what they do is they all put their stock in a little trust fund together. And then they, follow me here, they lose the paperwork for how, for how much each person put in. Now, what happens over time is one of these companies, like let's say uh, NVIDIA goes entirely out of business. Well, then at the end of seven years, they all divvy up whatever the funds were. So they got diversification without ever having to pay the tax of selling their stock. And this is totally illegal. And bankers went to jail for it. And so did people. So when anyone ever says, oh, I've got this really clever way to avoid taxes, they're literally breaking the law. They're describing to you how to go to jail. Just, just say no. You know, okay. And, and again, Huey is an expert and he can totally probably get away with tax reduction. You're not an expert. If, if you don't have a strong opinion on this, just, you know, trust me or Google it. Okay. Um, uh, what, a, what a 401k is and how do I avoid Backblaze putting money in it? Okay. So to work at Backblaze, what we do is we take, we pay you your salary. Fine. That's yours. In addition, we, we take 3% of that salary and we put it in a 401k. So all of you have a 401k, whether you want it or not, okay? And 401k is really, really good. And it's the best if you're younger. Um, and the, the advantage of a 401k is, uh, 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 this is good to come right after the uh, number three above, 401ks are tax-free. So you, you get all of the money and it's yours. And then you actually, get taxed on it when you withdraw it at the end when you're 62 or 65 when you withdraw it but the idea is when you're retired you're making a little less money so you're taxed at a lower rate and and if you go online and google uh uh and i'll show you some of the charts uh la later in this present time is your friend exponential growth is amazing and and as the as you put money in a 401k and it grows over a career of like 30 years then it will it will just you, you here's my recommendation Max out your 401k if you can, if you can afford to. Now, okay, so we, we contribute 3%, so you have a 401k. You can then opt in through, I think, ADP. Vanna, do you, is this ADP? You can opt in to put a little more of your salary in the 401k. This has two really good effects, which is it lowers your salary as far as the government's concerned, so you're taxed at a lower rate. You don't get taxed at all on that money, and then now it's hidden in this 401k, and as it grows, it doesn't get taxed. So... The money just explodes over, yes, you can choose how much you'd like to contribute in the in, in, in ADP is what Vanna says. So you go into ADP and all you have to do is sign into ADP and find it and max it out. That's it, if you can afford it, uh, because it does come out of your paycheck and you won't be able to touch it for a number of years. Um, so uh, it's that simple, just sign in, change a percentage, you, you, you have a 401k, there is no way you don't. So you know, just, just you know, do it. And if you do that, Party like a rock star with all the rest of your money and you will retire in luxury. I'm not kidding. You know, what, do you trust me? Now, Brian, has a 401k ever gone down in value? Yes. Um, one of, uh, no, not in the, not in the long run. 
but one of one of the rules that I may or may not get to in the in the future is if you need mo- if you need money, like let's say you have to pay a kid's tuition or you want to buy a house in the next three or two or three years, the the, the common wisdom is, is within five years. I'm a I'm a little bit of a risk taker, so it's more like two years for me. If you need the money, it should not be in the stock market because the stock market does go up and down. Um, I'm going to. We're going to get to, I'll, let me do the last question so I can get off of it, and then I'll show you a chart. Um, but but the stock market always goes up in the long run. It just does. But in the short run, you can lose a ton of money. I did uh, once in the 2007, 2008 crash. So, uh, but that's short term. And if you just hold, just hold, it will come back. It always comes back. The thing, if you need that money for retirement within five years, it, you you might want to start easing back out of, of almost all of this advice, which is don't be in mutual funds, don't be in uh, 401k. But anyone who's like Eli, who's starting out, uh, oh, you want to get in this? Because, the, the okay, so the government limits you to certain caps of how much you can contribute each year. So don't think you go, I'm going to skip it this year and double down next year. It doesn't work like that. There's a max every year. And Eli has like, you know, 42 years of career ahead of him that he's got to go work for some slave driver. And 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 during all that time, each year there's a max. And if he gets that money into the 401k, it's hidden away and it's growing. So 401k, good. It's the only legal tax avoidance uh, that basically exists. Um, now, and, yeah. the, there's also, when you get older in your career, more seasoned in your career, the cap does increase that you can do what's known as a catch up. Uh, yeah, five, I think, but that it, yeah. by that point, it may already be too late. Eric, uh, Eric Hawks uh, uh, asked this question in like uh, uh, orientation or something. He said, "Do you do catch up?" And I was like, "I was like, what now? What now?" <laughs> well, yeah, Eric, what was what's the catch up? What's the age you have to be? I forget what the age is. I think it's like fifty. Um, oh. and you can start doing yeah. catch up contributions where you throw in. Uh, you can your your basically your cap. Uh, expands. You can put your in cap more expands because you don't have any time left. <laughs> and and what what the government's doing with these programs is they're trying to get you to invest in four hundred one k because the world used to be different. Um, companies like Backblaze used to have pensions. I think Eric Hawks worked for a company and he might actually get a pension payout when he's when he's uh, seventy years old. Um, but uh, pensions, the company would continue on and then they would pay your sort of a decrease amount of your salary as you get older. That's all gone. Nobody does that anymore. I mean, except for a few government jobs. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm occasionally reading the comments and, and, and chuckling. So um, so the uh, now all the companies do this 401k and it's your money. It's a better system as long as you contribute to it, which is it's your money. Like, so if the, in the old days, if the company went out of business, you could lose your pension. You know, it was a worry that they might not do well in the future. Now this is your money and it's portable. If you leave Backblaze, you can choose to leave your 401k in the same funds with Backblaze as long as we exist. Or, or but, but we can't touch it. I mean, just to be totally clear, it's yours. And it's the relationship between you and the actual fund that you uh, invested in, like the Vanguard, um, the VTSAX that I mentioned in point one. Um, uh, but if you leave back place, you can also do what's called a rollover and roll it into the 401k of your next job or into a, a thing called an IRA. It, it doesn't matter. The point is, put money in the 401k. 401k, good. Um, uh, and 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 you think that you're like happier because you see your paycheck is a little bit bigger. But in 30 years, trust me, when you're getting tired like I am, you know, you you will just like that's your freedom. You know, freedom. Uh, and which brings us to point number five, fire, uh, financially independent and retire early. And you can Google this um, if you like. And the idea is that if you save money, you can be free from being a wage slave for people like Backblaze. You no longer have to work. You can and you can just retire. And, and the way this works is you if you withdraw below a certain percent of your total net worth because the, your net worth is going up by about 10% a year. So if you draw less than uh, 10% of your net worth every year, you live forever, not beholden to the man. So, 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 do you, you have know, another the, discussion about how to live forever? <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to come to that thought. Yeah. So, um, and that's the problem. We have a limited amount of life. So if I, if I were you guys, I'd put money in your 401k and I'd, I'd, I'd save money. And, 
and eventually when you look at that number um so uh it oh I, i'm gonna i'm gonna abuse him slightly because he's not here so vlad looked looked at his looked at how much he was worth and he hated his and so he walked out the door and he retired and that's 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 how we got him you know uh, you know part-time here and there but the point is that that it gives you uh financial independence doesn't force you to quit it just means you can walk away when you want to so you should google this term and and think about it now there's different fires this is i really love this there's lean fire now lean fire is for people that are a little more hardcore than me if you're willing to live in a van down by the river it turns out you can live i, I don't know if you've ever done the calculation now you eat rice and beans live in a van by the river be that if you can get say a hundred grand and you you get to withdraw 10 10 percent a year or it, i mean it, it more like five percent a year because because of inflation you you, you you can't you can't withdraw all the interest every year so so you get five grand a year to live on rice and beans and live in a van and you're free and that's lean fire there's also Oh, do people take into account? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have to. You have to do. If you're if you're thinking of being financially independent, retiring early, you have to really worry about things. If your kids are headed toward college, that's going to be like a million bucks. Uh, if if you know healthcare, you got to get a spreadsheet and 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 do it. Now, uh, a quick question: Can you get a financial advisor to help you with that calculation? No. 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 This is too important. Like if you're if you're actually ready to quit your job and and retire, you need to be doing this yourself. Y y like because like the financial advisors are useless. Um, oh, the Huey brings up a really good point. Some people like let's say you're um, from a, a, a an awesome country like Canada. Like uh, is Elton here? Uh, anyway, Elton, um, am I recording? Yeah, I'm recording. Okay, good. So Elton. Uh, lives in Canada, so but he works. He was working and living, uh, working for Backblaze. Well, he can sort of, if he's willing to move back to Canada when he retires, then um, then he gets free health care, you know, or 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 taxpayer funded health care in in Canada when he retires. So he can take that into account. So that's all, you know. It's it's a it's a big it's a big deal. But the but the thing is, if you only have thirty seconds to think about it, just start putting money in your 401k or, or saving a little money because it, it, it really is financial freedom. Okay, I'm gonna stop presenting for just half a second and um, present a different window. Uh, okay, so this is, this is an answer to like Gibbs' question earlier, like does the 401k ever go down? Okay, so if you look at this chart of the stock market's historic performance, it always goes up. Look at it, it goes up. That's what it does. But at any one moment, there are only a few bad moments to put your money into the stock market. We, ironically, we might be facing one of those right now. Um, but, but, um, but, but if you look at this mark on this on this thing, oh, can you guys see? Yeah, you can see this, right? Yeah, stock market crash. Okay, so in 1929, this precipitous thing that has never been seen before or since happened, where the stock market went from this this high down to this this really really low, and then it climbed back out of the hole. So if you were willing to wait. I don't know, was that 30 years or something? It, or uh, uh, 20 years, then it always makes money, period. But in the short term, so if you need if you need the money out for your kids' tuition or or to buy a house or something, it you know, it, 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 you can't depend on the stock market in the short term. You can depend on it in the long run. Okay, uh, now if I'm on this page, let's see, uh, back, oh, sweet. Okay, we'll go to my next slide. What I'm looking at is this URL. I'm going to paste this into the thing again. I'll, I'll send this out, or I'll do something with the with the results of this talk. Um, uh, and then I'm going to yay. Okay. Okay. So ah, shoot. Wait, I can make it a little smaller. There you go. Okay. So uh, okay. So so. The first point above, and I'll, I'll mail this all out later, but the first point above was if you only have 30 seconds, buy VTSAX and you're done. Okay, if you have like 10 or 15 minutes, you can go to this web page and, and learn what I, I got tired of telling this to everyone, so I, I wrote it up in a web page. And, um, and it includes, you know, a little of my philosophy and stuff like that, which I'll go over in, in, in like now, actually. Um, and my, my philosophy is 
And then finally, if you have like an hour, which is the talk we're in, um, that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some links. So, but first of all, my, not not from the slide yet. My philosophy is this: you can't time the market. Investing is boring. It's it's really really boring. And uh, start early, and start small. If you can only afford ten bucks a month, do it. Put it in the four hundred one k for ten bucks a month. But if you can afford to max it out, do. But it's okay to start small. It will take care of you. Um, especially if you're, you're younger, uh, 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 people like it, when you get to about our age, my age 53, then it, it's starting to be too late. Um, but, and, and we might have to work until we die. So investing is boring. This isn't exciting and there's nothing you can do to help it or hurt it. You can only hurt it. <laughs> uh, Huey's funny. So, um, so, uh, so just put your money and don't watch it every day. Don't, don't be Billy. This Billy watches the the stock prices every day. He what Tesla goes up, Tesla goes down, and you know, don't do that. Just put your money in the VTSAX or 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 these other funds that are in this this page that I recommend, and you're fine. You know, it just just stop watching it. <laughs> oh, Mike, you're so doomed. Um, okay, so uh, 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 you can't time the market. Oh, well, oh, so who's John Bogle? Okay, so from the slide, who's John Bogle? Let me let me copy and paste this into the into the. Um, okay, so this guy is a legend, um, and uh, you can you can Google him, and um, and and what he did was he invented this concept of the indexed mutual fund. So it turns out they noticed that all of these experts who were stealing two and 20 from you, who were, who were taking all of your money to advise you, they were never right. They literally never beat the market. It, a monkey throwing darts at the Wall Street Journal could do a better job than the investment advisors. So, so and this guy, John Bogle, figured that out. So instead of paying an army of guys to analyze companies and to and charge your customer a high fee for doing all that work. They have like an iPhone in the corner managing the entire VTSAX uh, uh, and it does it automatically. And what it is, is an index fund is just, they just sample the stock market in a certain way that an algorithm can do. It's like a Perl script. It's just like or Python for you younger people. Uh, and 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 it completely is automated and it does better than any advisor and so this system is safe it mirrors the market it goes up and to the right and and you earn 10 percent of your money a year on the long-term average and in the short term you can it can be a bumpy ride uh, which we might be seeing coming up because of COVID. um but um but i've been through i've been through a couple of these in my life and and it always gets it always it always gets better if you're willing to wait it out. So put your money in the market, put it in stocks, and, and let it sit. Um, okay, uh, so John Bogle, you can Google him, you can you can look it up, but it, but he did this amazing service to everyone. He freed us all from the financial advisors. He they used to have all these meetings where they said nobody tell the people that we don't know what we're doing. But now with John Bogle, he left the room and he goes, screw it, I'm telling everyone, and he told everyone, and now we're free. So this guy, and he he passed away a little bit ago. Yes, definitely, Huey. Um, so uh, John Bogle, two years ago, I don't know. And someone knows when he when he passed away, um, but he 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 didn't die very rich. Uh, and he and he was I I think he was the founder of Vanguard, but I'm not sure of that. Um, but uh, and Vanguard, the reason I bring up Vanguard funds a bunch is they were one of the earliest. Uh, indexed mutual funds and they their philosophy was very low cost does this sound familiar uh, uh, they provide a really good service at the, uh, the very lowest price on the market this is sort of backblazes philosophy so so mutual Vanguard charges you a lower fee so again no mutual fund is is better than another mutual fund in the same index they're all just tied to the index so they're all the same so what do you do well, you sort by price. Well, it turns out when you sort by price, you you often come up with Vanguard. Now there are other alternatives now, but for a number of years, you could only you, you, Vanguard was like the only show in town. I, I I was so old, I invested in Vanguard by calling one eight hundred Vanguard. I wonder if that phone number still works. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but now it's vanguard.com and and you you just you just log into a website 
and turn on two factor for God's sakes so that someone doesn't steal all your money and, and you can, and you can and invest and they'll help you with everything. They love, you know, you know, accepting your money and managing it for you, managing it, their iPhone in the corner manages the whole thing. So anyway, um, so that's, that's what an index mutual fund is. And that's the basis of everything. But again, if you get confused or you don't have any time, just go back up to number one point on this slide. You have 30 cents, just buy VTSAX. It's basically a total stock market index fund that just mirrors the stock market. It's, it's, Pretty safe. It's pretty good and does really well. Better than Schwab or Fidelity. Uh, you, it matters the fund. So uh, Huey asked, um, is in the chat, he asked, uh, died in 2019, Bogle. Oh, that's so sad. Um, so uh, Huey asks, is, is, is Vanguard better than Schwab or Fidelity? Again, if, if every fund is indexing the same index, I'll give you an example. Uh, the S&P 500 is like the 500, I think it's the 500 biggest stocks on the U.S., Stock Exchange or New York Stock Exchange or something like that. And it doesn't matter which company you go with, Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, it doesn't matter um, because they're all, a computer is managing the fund. And, wh and what they're doing is they're buying, you know, one of each of the stocks from those 500 biggest companies. It's a little more complicated than that, but the, the point is it's, real, it's not that complicated. And uh, they're all the same. So the only difference is go find their fees. On, on the funds. And then one thing that's kind of sleazy is sometimes the fees are hard to find. Um, they'll claim their fees are really low, but then there's an extra fee to sell or something like that. I hate that crap. And and Vanguard is a trusted brand who, uh, oh wait, by the way, does everyone trust me? Are, are you gonna buy Vanguard because I said it? Or are you gonna Google it? Okay, good, nobody trusts me. You shouldn't trust anything anyone ever tells you about investments, including the guy you're paying to, 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 to tell you about it. You, you have to do this stuff yourself. It's too late. I already, I already bought Vanguard from before <laughs> where you had this disclaimer at the beginning of the presentation. How dare you? <laughs> uh, uh, but, but Vanguard is a trusted brand. They have a very long-term reputation of being very, very honest and, and pretty open with their fees. It can be hard to figure out. So it's like, you know, at some point I just go with Vanguard because I know they don't, they don't, totally bone you and fidelity and schwab depending on the fund uh cool depending on the fund uh schwab will have a managed fund where that's where they take a huge fee and have monkeys throwing darts at a dartboard doing a worse job than the index fund i don't know why anyone does it anymore it shouldn't exist it shouldn't even be legal but that, you know that's that's the way yeah so so Vanguard tends to, their philosophy was index funds, so that most of their funds are indexed, although they do have a few managed funds. But, you know, again, VTSAX, if, you have, if, you have, if you're confused. Um, but, uh, and, then, and then, you know, go off on your own and, and do some research, but, but they're all the same. And, and at any one time, there might be a fund that's slightly cheaper than Vanguard, uh, lower management fees for the same fund. And that's fine, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, in fact, that, that's better. Uh, but Vanguard tends to be pretty, pretty decent. Um, and and then the, the thing about one eight hundred Vanguard. So the old in the old days, uh, you used to like meet with these guys or call your broker on the phone and and stuff like that. And one eight hundred Vanguard was just like a phone bank before the internet. And now it's just an internet site. So their whole idea is lower the number of employees that are not adding value and just allow you to just you know buy these index funds. Okay, how am I doing? Okay, pretty good. So. Uh, you, uh, you cannot time the market. Yeah. We talked about that a little bit. Um, but, but basically there are two, uh, there, there are, there are only two valid philosophies. Nothing else is valid. This is one of those absolute statements that has all these like exceptions to it, but don't, don't, but, but in, in general, you have to put your money in the market and you can't possibly time it. So there's two ways of getting your money into the market. One is you just put your money in. <laughs> I like that one because it's simple uh, and I don't have a lot of time to manage my, my investments. The other one is to do what's called dollar cost averaging. And, and, and there's different philosophies on both of these. The dollar cost average, basically, like, let's say you put 10%, of, like, let's say you had a, a million bucks you wanted to put in the market, put 10% in a month on a regular basis. And what that does is that averages out those ups and downs of the stock market. Um, and, and those are the only two valid uh, philosophies. What? I recommend no one look at the difference. <laughs> what? Oh, geez. You guys are dis uh, discussing the advanced topics over in the chat. Okay. So. Right, avoid, avoid the comments. Yeah. Just keep going. We'll <laughs> okay.
Uh, so you cannot time the market and then you cannot choose individual stocks. So, uh, okay. So, uh, I heard in a bar, uh, this is literally, I heard from a guy in a bar that, um, a guy at Stanford got a PhD for the following concept. If one stock has just risen to $25 a share and another stock has just dropped to $25 a share, which one of those two stocks should you buy? Do stocks have momentum? Can you, can you predict the future based on how they're rising or lowering? And it turns out, no, you can't. They're exactly correctly valued by the market at that day. So anybody who ever says, I'm buying Tesla, it's going up, just back away slowly and, and just don't talk to them anymore. It, it, it's not, Tesla's exactly accurately valued today. Um, and, and by, you know, for all the things, it, there's a 50% chance it'll go up and a 50% chance it'll go down. It's actually because it, it's actually like a 51% chance it'll go up and a 49% chance it'll go down, which is why we are in the stock market. But any one stock is incredibly volatile. Um, so you, you one stock can, on average, can raise or lower its price by 50% a year. And so if you're in one stock, this is why we like mutual funds, VTSAX, which is if you're in one stock, then it can just slaughter you. Like if you just say, I'm all in on NVIDIA, like Billy, then, then he'll, he'll just get wiped out overnight when something changes in the market. Or, or you could invest in some other crazy stock and you could make millions, but that's gambling, not investing. We, we, by the way, what, what a lot of people did, and I, I did for a while, is set aside a little, I think Yev does this, set aside a little bit of money, a limited amount of money. Like, like you know, when you go to Vegas and you'd like take a hundred dollars mm -hmm. you say, when this is gone, I'm going to stop. Okay. So take a little money and play with it. Buy individual stocks, have a blast, have fun. It's great. You know, yeah. and, and when it's all gone, just stop. Right. Um, uh, so addendum, I do do that. Uh, and it's very important uh, to uh, understand that it all will go away at some point. And if you treat it that way, uh, then maybe you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so, or you might make some money. Uh, maybe. I, um, right when the internet started taking off, I know you heard this internet thing. It's really hip right now. And when it started taking off, they called it the information superhighway. And I had I had this little like, like I had this little fun this uh, like I had a thousand bucks that I was just just dicking around with, and I was twenty two or twenty five or something. And I bought I bought this company stock. I kept asking my friends, um, "Do you know what Cisco does?" And they go, "I don't know, but I think they build internet parts." Like like information super high. So I, I, I so I bought some. But again, I'm not saying this is a good investment. I, I and then then blind lucky, I'm like watching the stock every day because all of a sudden it's like twenty thousand dollars and I'm all freaked out and I just I just got out. I just sold. So you know I made a little money and you know and I lost my, they lost the whole twenty thousand on other things. So but that's gambling, which is fun and you should you feel free to do that. But that's not investing. Investing is boring. Put your money in VTSX as AX in your 401k and walk away from it. Okay. And, this that is also how I gamble in Vegas is with a hundred dollars <laughs> and you just wait until it's gone. Um anyway, if you go to that, if you if you go to that web the webpage here, and I'll mail out this thing and you can tell I wrote it in, in 2012, but I updated it in 2019, I think. It has the list of um of uh funds that I happen here. Let me let me I'm gonna I'm gonna show this. Okay, so, okay, oh, that's really tiny, isn't it? Uh, let's see, what do I do to get it to zoom up a little? Let's do this. Ooh, can anyone read any of that? Yeah. Okay, so, but it's on that webpage, if you scroll down. So it, 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 people would ask me, and this is why I wrote this little webpage, was people would ask me like, what do you, what do you in, invest in? And, and again, it, it's, not, it's not really that important which funds I'm in. The, the important thing is low fees. Um, and if you don't have any time and, you, and you're confused by this whole thing, VTSAX and you're done. <laughs> um, but if you have like 10 minutes or whatever, you can read through this list. Um, but don't take it as some like Brian has picked these. Again, nobody can pick stocks. These were just the funds that kind of represented. Um, so my philosophy, before they had things like VTSAX and, and, and a few others, what I had done years ago was I basically had some in small company stocks in the US, but index across all small companies, some in medium sized companies in the US and some in large companies in the US. And then uh, Pacific Rim is like, 
uh, Japan, Korea. Does anyone know what the Pacific Rim is? But it, it represents that section of the world. But, I, but there's an index of all the uh, stocks across that and uh, some European stocks, which have really done badly. Um, but um, and then and then here, let me scroll down a little. So so how have they done? Well, oh, OK, so how have they done? Well, if you look at these charts, uh, if you invested in in November of 09. Oh, here, I'll do it over here. If you invest in November of 09, put ten thousand dollars in the fund. And these charts are available on Vanguard's website. They basically will tell you if you just drop ten thousand dollars, walk away. What will happen to it? Well, it would be worth $40,000 uh, 10 years later. So Brian, did you check, you know, uh, like all of them? Some of them already closed the door. They don't let you to buy anymore. Uh, yeah, this is really important. So uh, these are all, uh, it doesn't matter which ones you get. It, it, the, it matters what index they're tied to, not that they're this exact fund. And so what happens is when, they, when the fund gets so much money, it gets unwieldy. The big, big investment firms don't want to buy uh, uh, a million stocks in general. They only want to be in a, in a few stocks and they're not allowed legally to buy like more than 10% of your company. So that limits the, anyway, the point is that, that, that when the fund gets too big, it becomes this, this management nightmare. So they start a new smaller fund, but as long as it's tied to the same index, it'll have the same performance. There's no, there's nothing magic. So if you tie it to the Russell 2000, which is like the 2000 largest stocks, I don't know if anyone knows the definition of this uh, or the S and P 500 or, you know, or whatever, then you, then it will, follow the same trajectory no matter which company is managing it it's all about the index not the particular fund and then the particular fund is based on fees so you just try and find one with low fees um that's it there's no magic and again confused vtsax is vtsax still open i hope it is it's the world's largest mutual fund um so anyway and then uh like uh yeah so VS Max was a small cap fund if i put ten thousand dollars in that it was worth forty thousand dollars ten years later um the international growth did worse so these scales are different do you see how this is zero to forty thousand over here and this one is 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 zero to twenty five thousand so the international uh growth fund uh that i happen to buy you know would only have doubled your money but it's all better than leaving it in a checking account or in your mattress it's all free money um, and then uh, my European fund, let's see, how's it doing? Uh, $10,000 became like 18,000. So and that's not great. So, so that, but it, but it's free money. I mean, it's a free $8,000 it's, it's doubled, but it, it's not, it's not great. And then, yeah. And then, and then the Pacific rim is, is about the same. So either it's somewhere between doubling your money and four times your money. And, and if you, it, uh, uh, is past performance, a predictor of future performance. Uh, the answer is no. In fact, it's almost reverse. It, the way to lose the most amount of money in the stock market is to buy every stock after it's gone up <laughs> because it's almost guaranteed like to bounce around. And so when it bounces up, you get excited, you buy it, you know, don't time the market. And, and with these funds, you don't look at these and go, oh, well, why did Brian pick these some of them are down. No, 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 no. You've missed the whole point of the thing. You just put your money in and forget about it, and it and it and it makes money. Okay, I, I'm almost done. Uh, I I have this little final part of this web page that I wanted to sneak out before. This is the advice that I would give anybody in Silicon Valley regarding their stock options. And uh, this is not specific to you. And in fact, it's it's absolutely illegal for me to give you advice to recommend you exercise or not exercise your options at Backbus. It's totally illegal and and to read. And they're just they're just rules that that we all live by in Silicon Valley. And there's a few of them that that, that you know maybe have some technical jargon and I'm like file an 83B. Uh, follow the rules. <laughs> but it, it, actually the rules say don't exercise your stock options for most of you. Uh, you don't exercise your stock options. Uh, if you exercise your stock options, you can get in a really bad place where you can end up owing tax money but not having enough money to pay it. And so, uh, it, but these are rules that basically keep you safe. And and what you do is you sell your stock option and flip it, and in, in the public market, the same microsecond, it's totally safe and and you can't lose money. Um, in here, like number eight is 
uh, <laughs> common battlefield wisdom. I don't even remember writing that. Uh, and it says that after a liquidation event, like an IPO, uh, uh, employees should diversify. When you, when you have more than 80% of your net worth in one stock, you are an idiot. Uh, and it has nothing to do with which stock. It, it, it could be the best stock in the world. You could be absolutely convinced that it'll go up, but it's a mistake because it may not go up. And and so the idea is diversification and averaging, not not timing the market or or picking a stock. And you can't time the market with Backblaze, and you can't pick a stock with Backblaze any better than you can pick any other stock. Um, I mean, you can because you are insiders, and 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 that's illegal. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's it. Uh, that's that's my whole thing. I'm gonna stop presenting, and then I'm I'm opening for questions. Uh, if anyone has any questions, Brian, why why is my year to date return uh, 13.6 percent negative? That's sad. How do you how do you make that positive? For which one, VTSAX or or which which fund? Just is this your 401k? It's for my 401k mixture. <laughs> well, I think you didn't Wait follow my advice. Two years. Enough. I did what? follow your advice, Brian. No. So what's about what's it, about going to happen? It, it, no, no, no. It's really funny. So so th this goes back to a conversation I was having with other people where I was like, your 401k can go down. Uh, so for the quarter, my 401k is up 23%. Hooray. But for the year, it's down 13%. <laughs> Boo. But what yeah. happened during this year? A lot of stuff, it turns out. <laughs> yeah. So what i'm really afraid so this is i'm it's great i'm i'm getting you now when you when you hopefully can accept this information and be calm about it uh cuz what might happen uh there were all when i was growing up there were these stories of like you know my grandfather kept all his money in a mattress because during the great stock market crash the banks went under and took all the money but that was this moment in time and it never happened again and he shouldn't have done that um what's what may or may not happen is uh in the next few months is when if the stock market uh takes a dive because the economy is not doing well because of covid um it, I'm worried that it will shake your confidence in its advice and that you will stay out of the stock market. Now that would be a horrible mistake. The best thing you could do is be in the stock market at that point and continue to contribute to 401k because 20 years from now, you'll just laugh your way all the way to the early retirement. Um, but, but, um, but you gotta, you, uh, and, and, and this is one of those exceptions. If you can't handle the ride, like if this stresses you out, you know, if every day you're checking your 401k and it's and it's and it's slowly killing you inside, you may not want to follow this advice. You know, keep your money in a mattress or or in a checking account or something. Um, but the, if you can uh, just what? Or the the 2008 crash definitely saw that. My 401k <laughs> for the little bit that was in it just went down to like half of what it was, and then uh, three years later, it was twice what it was. <laughs> I sold. Uh, we sold our previous company, uh, Billy and I, and um, and Gleb. Uh, sold a Mail Frontier in 2006, and and I made a little over a million dollars from the sale in addition to my salary. And I plowed it in the stock market using one of these two algorithms, which was deposited immediately. And then in 2007, I lost half of it. Um, so it's a rough ride. But again, I was calm. You know, I, I actually laughed. It, it, it's a rough ride, but then it rides back up. It'll be back. So if we hit a little rough patch here and things all go south, just keep just keep putting money in your 401k, you know, every month it's, it's dollar cost averaging. It's, it's now you're, now it's a good news. You're putting, you're buying even more stock for the same amount of money every month into your 401k. And then you'll write it off into retirement in, in 20 years. If that's your time horizon. Um, and anyone who's within five years, there's a whole different presentation where, where we get in a room and, and we tell you all sorts of different information. But if you're more than five years from retirement, just put money in your 401k. Um, Anything else? I'm just responding to Kyle in the chat. Oh, I, I hit my chat. If you, have, if you have more questions for a not Brian Wilson, I'm happy uh, to. I always like to, uh, I know you're less of a fan for just the straight index, but uh, for those of us who are a little too lazy to sort of shift things among different classes of investments, depending on how close we are to retirement, Vanguard's got these target retirement oh. funds that are I, I mentioned, only I mentioned. marginally at most higher fee. And yeah. are great for the lazy people like me. I yeah, no, that as well. Kyle and Jessica were asking about it. Yeah, uh, the, these are these. Them. They'll often be called something like Target Twenty Fifty or Target right. Twenty Thirty, and they're really an excellent service. Uh, the, the unlike most. Now again, do you trust me? 
No, you're supposed to say no. Anyway. Yes, uh, I trust everything you say. Never, never oh, no. trust I, uh, oh, God. anybody message, who, message. who gives you any investment advice. They're most they're most likely wrong. So, but this this target 2020 is a really is is a it, it, 2020. That would be funny. No, target 2030. <laughs> what happens is all in bonds. <laughs> uh, it it basically embraces all of the principles that that we're talking about, but then it it slowly m changes the fund to be a little more conservative as and and less variable as you get closer to your retirement age. So it's it's an excellent service. And and again, w the reason I like it. You know, you you could probably do a little better if you you know if you manage it yourself or something. But like Elliot said, I, I, like I don't, don't don't look at it. Don't get your get your mind off of it. Don't stop looking at your bank account total every day, and and just allow the market to take care of itself. You'll check it in five years. It'll be great. And most of the investment advisors will tell you that like once a year you're supposed to do a few things like rebalance among the funds. Let's say one fund, the index of small companies did really badly, but large companies did really well. You're supposed to balance. That, that's all advanced and you can, you can get into that if you have more than an hour. Um, you, you can go do that research. It's not that bad. It's like five hours of research, but this is a start and then you can Google it. There's there's subreddits that, that talk about all this stuff filled with idiots. Um, my, my, one of my favorite subreddits is um, called Fat Fire for um, financially independent retire early with a shit ton of money. And uh, and it's hilarious because the, the questions on it are like, okay, what kind of an airplane do you all buy? And things like that, you know, just crazy, you know, crazy stuff. Um, and, uh, oh, just reading the comments. So, uh, uh, but in, um, uh, in Fat Fire, it, it started getting trolled by a lot of investment advisors. They figured out that here was this group of high net worth individuals all in one place. It's perfect lead gen if you're a sleaze bag advisor uh, advising uh, people on on you know taking part of their money every year and and possibly robbing them. And then if you want if you want horror stories, um, I I have I have we have so many friends that um, uh, this is just a warning if you ever make a little bit of money. Uh, a, a little, little, like 300,000, like we're not talking about 3 million or 30 million or anything like that. You make $300,000, you, you show up on the radar and these ambulance chasers, uh, I, that's what I call them, it's wrong, it's, that's the term for lawyers, but it, it, these guys show up and they'll send you glossy photos and they'll promise you things. And our friends that uh, sold a startup, they lost half of their, their money. And it was like uh, they had, uh, I don't know, 14, 15 million. And uh, the investment advisor stole half of it. And they and this is common in Silicon Valley. Like, if you, especially if you're young and you've never had any of this, these guys come to your house and they're dressed really well. And they have ties and they talk smooth. And then they take all your money. That's how that works. They add no value at all. And they'll show up in the back place offices. And, and based on my title, you know, I drive a Nissan Sentra, you know, a smart car, but they'll, based on my title, it's, you know, it's this bet, the officer in the company, and then they'll try and they'll, they'll try and they'll find it. They're basically, we introduce each other and then they'll try and figure out if I'm an idiot and they can take half my money. Um, so whatever you do, never hire a, an investment advisor and don't be impressed uh, by the suits and ties. Facebook actually had uh a lot of them who would message a bunch of people and kind of say they tell each of them that they were going to be on campus on a certain day and then talk one of those people into actually letting them in the door <laughs> now they didn't they weren't actually invited by anybody it's not an official thing oh, but if they get clever. enough people in on it they can probably sucker one of them to bring them in as a guest <sighs> And then, and then they're inside. It looks like Facebook endorsed it or something like that. And 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 in Silicon Valley, when you're young, you know, and you didn't, you've never been through one of these, and you haven't watched all your friends lose millions of dollars to these jackasses, uh, uh, then then you you basically fall for this crap. And I don't blame. I mean, uh, you know, some of my best friends lost, you know, gave these guys millions, um, but they don't add any value, zero. And and in fact, and uh, like literally just. When I say steal, most of them don't steal your money and put it. In, they they take their fee, which is two percent of whatever you have every year, and then they lose the rest by giving you bad investment advice um, and managing your fund. Uh, you know, and and young people will often say, "Oh, I'm just going to outsource it. I'm rich now. I can pay people to worry about this stuff." You have to worry about your own money. There is no. I, it sucks. 
but the richest guy in the world has to has to manage his own finances. You, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot trust anybody um, and, and anyone who tells you that they're going to outsource for it. I mean, I wish you the best of luck. And, and if you want to try, but you're going to lose all your money. A couple of times on these, on these Reddit groups, I've had, I've gotten kind of, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit angry when some investment advisor is on there. Cause I know, I know these guys are all thieves and, um, and liars. And um, I'll, I'll be on there and I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll be steaming as someone will ha- be having a conversation with this guy. And it's actually, he's falling for it. You know, the, the, the consumer guy is, is falling for it. He might like hire this investment advisor and I'll, I'll just say, oh my God, you know, I just lost it one time and I, I, I should find this comment and delete it. But I, I said like, like I, it, it, whenever you think, oh, I might hire an investment advisor, just take half of your money out of the bank, pile it up on your front yard douse it in gasoline and light it on fire instead. That's such a better way. At least you get a little heat from it. And, and you don't hate this, this evil, you know, person who, who just stole all this money from you. And you realize you could have had a nice life if you'd just not hired an investment advisor. Anyway, what do you, so do you guys trust me about the investment advisors? No, about the- you're not supposed to trust sure. anybody who gives you investment advice they're all wrong so just google it and, and think about it and 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 make your own decision so your brian your answer is trust index that's it yeah index funds uh and, index and it's, funds or index like index. index funds are the tons of Usually, I mean, I, I do it through mutual funds that, 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 but you trust the index and I go with, I, I, I go with, you know, big funds, Fidelity's fine, your Vanguard's fine, mm-hmm. you know, they're all, they're all the same. And then if you, if you really wanted to look at it, you could try and optimize a little bit on the, on the fees and take the lowest one because they're, they're all going to have the same, they're going to track the same index and have, and have the same results. Um, that, that, that's my answer. But do you still have to compare like Fidelity, Vanguard? And, uh, if you were really, cons- so, okay. So I used to, when I, when I, when I needed to, I'm a technical guy. So when I needed to buy Ram for a computer, I used to have to shop around. I'd have, I looked at all these websites. I'd look for the lowest price. And after a while, uh, I'd go to crucial.com and it would always be within 10% of the lowest price. So I stopped shopping around. That, that's why I like Vanguard is they're, they're always pretty honest and it's always pretty close to the lowest price. And, um, and so it, 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 it's my go-to, but I'm not, I'm not loyal to any of these guys. Um, and, and, and they all have, they probably all have good funds now because the index fund concept won. It, 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 it was controversial at first in the like, I don't know, 70s, 80s, where the investment advisors were fighting it for all they were worth. It's literally like watching your whole career die in front of your face. So, and the index kept winning, kept winning, kept winning. They were always better than every investment advisor. So because of that, um, I think most people now do understand that index funds are are absolutely the best. But so so Fidelity offers an index fund to try and attract those investors who want an index fund. And and uh, uh, what are some of the other ones? I mean, there's a, there's like a thousand you know, T Rowe Price or whatever. There's like a thousand of these companies now, um, and they're all okay. They're, they're probably all okay. I I like big brands that probably won't fail, um, or the government won't let them fail <laughs> if things get really bad. Um, and and then and then there's a whole other uh, yeah. If you have a lot of money, then you can start like I was. We were talking with Billy, you know, about like, are you worried about losing it in a crash or something, or if you get, you know, sued or something? So you can start talking about you know having some in different countries and things like that. But for now, for most of you, just you know, Vanguard, uh, VTSAX. Others? No? How am I doing on time? Oh yes, it's been more than an hour. I filled an hour. Um, was any of that helpful, Cecilia? Are you still there? Yes, I am. Sweet. What do you think? Do you want to talk about real estate? Okay. Talk about being a landlord. If we're okay, so so no, there's don't, don't it's do not do a it. good time for landlords now. <laughs> don't be a landlord. This is a great moment for me to, to, to win, but it's dishonest. It's dishonest. So another philosophy. Uh, 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 is is to to continually buy real estate. Uh, and, uh, usually the pattern is I think Neelay d- did this really well. He would buy a house, you know, barely get on board, 
make the payments on the house after five or six or 10 years, he would move to a new house and rent out the old one. I think Cecilia did this. Is this true, Cecilia? Yes. And I think Billy did this also. They lived in a house for 20 years. And then when they could finally, they moved and then they rent the old house out. It turns out this is actually, this is a pretty solid investment. And, and, and it'll often almost mirror or mirror the stock market, the 10% a year, 8% a year, whatever you're getting. It, it, it is not terrible. Um, the, what you heard all these people groan was uh, being a landlord. So the, the problem is you, you kind of have to manage the property yourself to make it equal the index stock funds. The index stock funds, you put the money in, it's free. You're just free. You don't have to touch anything. It's totally free. But if you're a landlord, you, you got to call in the middle of the night that the toilet's busted or there's water pouring all over the floor. We hired got, a property manager. So, okay. So you hire a property manager, but now they're taking... Now, now they're taking a sliver of your profits mm -hmm. going to the property manager, and now it would have been worth it just to do the the, the mutual funds. But but uh, the landlords have to deal with these hassles, and I some people are like all anti landlord. Yeah, they they said, oh, I don't want to be a landlord. That's distasteful. You know, they're evil, and and I I think landlords are the best because they they're providing this great service. They dump all their money into the real estate. They charge you month to month or, or whatever, and they take care of everything. And they do this for too little money. It's a terrible business. It takes too much of your time. It's a hassle. You get called at random hours. It's like being on call, like, at, like in the data center or, or mm -hmm. something. So, and then you get pissed off, you know, tenants and they don't pay you, you know, and then you have to collect. And it's, it's just, it's like, a, it's like this huge hassle. And for all of this, they charge this little tiny sliver of a profit. So I think we're abusing them. I think they have Stockholm syndrome. I, I, I literally think it's a great service. Uh, I rent um, and, uh, and it's a great service. And, and you know what happens when like, let's say there's a leak in the refrigerator, we'll tell the landlord right away. And then then the, shaking her you watch the floor start warping, you know, and the landlord doesn't fix it. Ah, screw it. It's his, it's his house. Like he can deal with it when he wants. Our roof, like I have a, 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 a sort of a walk-in closet. And whenever it rains, a, a spot appears in my walk-in closet and it drips. So I slide a bucket under it and I message the landlord again uh, and say it's, you know, and, and they have to deal with it and they never fix it. Uh, no roof in California could be made waterproof, apparently. And, um, and, uh, and then this damage happens, but like, I don't care, you know, uh, people are impossible to fix because it's made out of twigs. <laughs> so, um, in Oregon, it rains all the time. You, you'd have, you, you wouldn't even believe this if you're from California, it like rains every day and a lot, uh, by our standards. And there isn't a roof in Oregon that leaks, not one. Uh, it's unacceptable. It, it's completely, it's completely unacceptable. And the, the roofers there are competent and know what they're doing. And in California, the roofers are obviously incompetent. And, and they, and um, one morning, one morning I got up and my, my, um, it was raining. So of course my closet was dripping water. So I slid a bucket underneath it and I drove to work. And on the way to work, I stopped at the hardware store here in Portilla Valley and their whole ceiling had collapsed from water. And they were dealing with that. And I just went, oh, like, no, okay. So they were in six inches of water or something. Then I went to work where we put buckets under the drips at work because not one roof in California can be made waterproof. But that is totally unacceptable in Oregon. Um, so anyway. So it, it, these fires happen. They came really close to our house. Yeah, it, we ran. Who cares? Just uh, grab the cat, climb in the car and drive away. Toss the keys on the front porch as it burns. Like it doesn't, you know. So, you know, landlords are... You know, it's up to you though. If you do it right, it's actually a, a good way to to have diversification. Um, and and uh, between that and the stock market, I wouldn't put one hundred percent of your money in real estate. But um, like, I've never missed a payment. I remember one time when a landlord told me that the first time, he looked up at his records and said, "Ah, you've been a good tenant." And I went, "Really? Like, really?" And he goes, "Yeah, shit. I, I, you never missed a payment in." in eight years. And I said, well, what's normal? And he goes, eh, you 20% of them, you miss payments and are late and, you know, and we mostly take care of our own stuff and we try and improve the properties.